I, why, why, why are we still acting as if women shouldn't be treated the same as men and, and, and paid the same for doing the same work? Why, why, why are we having these old arguments? I, I thought these were done. It can be discouraging sometimes. And you drive through some neighborhoods in Atlanta or Chicago or Washington, D.C. Or you go out in some rural areas and some small towns and you think, you know what? Folks are still having a hard time and some of the things that should have been fixed haven't been fixed and you get discouraged. I, I, I get it. Even as President of the United States, there were times where I thought, man, I want... I thought I could get this done or that done, and, and somehow the, the special interests and the lobbyists and others are blocking it and making it hard, and you get frustrated. I get it. But you know what? Whenever I get in one of those moods, I just remind myself that when we work together, when we put in a little bit of effort, Things may not get perfect, but they do get better. When, 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 when John Lewis started marching across that bridge, it didn't eliminate racism and bigotry in America, but it started something that got the Voting Rights Act passed. And it, it made things better. I didn't get everything done that I wanted to get done when I was president, but I could say when I look back at the end of eight years, you know what? The country is better off now than it was when I took office. Twenty, twenty some mil, million people have health care that didn't have it before. That's a good thing. Children that were in poverty have been lifted up out of poverty. Not all of them, but some of them. That's a good thing. Maybe this next generation came up and saw that, you know, black and white can work together, that we don't have to be at odds, that, that we can treat each other with dignity and respect, that, that we don't have to be scared of each other but should reach out to each other. A president by himself can't solve every challenge in the economy. But if we elect people like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, if we elect Reverend Warnock and John Ossoff, who are focused on working people and getting you the help that you need, it can make a difference for thousands of people and 10,000 people, 100, maybe a few million people might be better off. A president by himself can't eliminate all racial bias in our criminal justice system, but if we elect district attorneys and state's attorneys and sheriffs who are focused on equality and justice, it can make things better. John understood this. Dr. King understood this. Abraham Lincoln understood it. George Washington understood it. We knew, we, John, I remember talking to John Lewis right before he passed. And, and we talked about all these young people who had come out to start uh, this wave of, of marches, nonviolent, peaceful protests all across the country. And, and we talked about how the, this younger generation, they don't have to choose between protest and politics. If we're going to translate our aspirations into laws and practices, we've got to engage in both. There's nothing un-American about protest. This country was founded on protesting against injustice. That's what the American Revolution was about. Now, John ran for office all those years and kept protesting even while he was in office because he understood there are two sides of the same coin. It's us acting on behalf of our highest aspirations, even though we know we won't get there. We're never going to get all the way to the promised land. We're, 
but, but we can help lay the path for future generations to get there. That's what public service should be about. That's what citizenship should be about. That's what voting is about. Not making things perfect, but making things better. Laying that path, brick by brick, to a better future. Putting us on track so that a generation from now, two generations from now, three generations from now, we can look back and they, we can say, you know, that was a moment when we turned towards our better angels, to our, our better impulses, where we started to pull together as a nation instead of being riven apart. And the fact that we don't get 100 percent of what we want is not a good reason not to vote. We got to keep at it. You know, typically just over 50 percent of us vote. Think about that. Almost half the people who are eligible typically do not vote. And yes, part of this is because folks make it hard to vote. Your governor right here in Georgia seems to make it his job to come up with ways to make it as hard as possible for some Georgians to vote. I, these folks sure are scared of folks voting, aren't they? Think about that. If you've decided you don't, you don't want to vote, don't you wonder why it is that the folks in power are so worried about you voting? There must be a reason why they try to make it hard for you to vote. It's because they know if you vote, things change. The answer is not to stay home, it's to turn out like never before and show them what's in your heart. Show them the spirit of community. Imagine if 60% of us voted. Imagine if 70% of us voted. Not 100%, just 70%. Imagine January 20th when we swear in President Biden and Vice President Harris and Reverend Warnock and John Asa are in the United States Senate. Imagine having leaders in office who have a plan to get us out of this mess and who care about working Americans and have a plan to help you start getting ahead, who believe in science and have a plan to protect this planet for our kids, who believe in racial equality and are willing to do the work to bring us closer to an America where no matter what you look like or where you come from or who you love or how much money you got, everybody's treated with dignity. Everybody's treated with respect. Everybody, if they're willing to work hard, has a chance to make it. Imagine having public officials who, who abide by the values our mamas and our grandmas and our grandpas taught us, being honest, being responsible, working hard, looking after those who can't look after themselves, showing compassion, believing in justice. All that is possible. All that is within our reach. For all, and, and, and the reason I know it is, is because I've seen it all across the country. Every time I've gotten discouraged over these last four years, Whenever I've seen our worst impulses revealed, I've also seen America at its best. I've seen folks of every age and background look out for other people, packing cities and town squares so that families wouldn't be separated, rallying so that another classroom won't get shot up, proclaiming that we need to do something to make sure our kids won't grow up in an uninhabitable planet. We, we have seen health care workers risk their lives daily to save somebody else's loved ones. We've seen people contribute and volunteer, bring food to neighbors, help out the elderly who are alone, who are having an especially hard time right now. We've seen Americans of all races join together to declare in the face of injustice and brutality that black lives matter, no more but no less. That we, we, we don't want anybody feeling superior or better than anybody else. We just want everybody to treat each other with common decency and respect. That's all we want, just basic fairness, so that no child in this country should feel the continuing sting of racism 
and that they're judged by the content of their character. We've seen people march all across this country. You, you, you've seen towns where there are barely any black folks, and they still got folks marching with, with signs up because they believe that we can be better. Georgia, America's a good and decent place. We've just seen so much noise and so much nonsense and distraction. And, and, and we feed, we've, we've seen media companies and, and, and politicians make a business of making us hate each other because it drives clicks and drives eyeballs. And so sometimes it's hard to remember. But I'm asking you to remember what this country can be. Georgia's a better place than it used to be. There used to be a lot of violence and cruelty in this place. And it's a better place because some folks went out there and made sacrifices, black and white. And America, it's a better place than it used to be. But it can be better now. But you've got to do the work. It's all up to you now. I'm asking you in your ability to believe in John Ossoff and Reverend Warnock and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, but most importantly, your collective ability to get us out of these dark times and help us build back better. I'm asking you to believe in your ability to change America. We can't abandon the Americans who are hurting right now. We can't abandon the young people who aren't getting the education they deserve right now. We can't abandon those young people who are out there who inspired us this summer. We've got to channel their activism into action. We can't just imagine a better future. We've got to fight for it. If you haven't voted yet, go out and vote. It's not that much to ask. Go out there and vote. Do this basic thing that can make America better. Tomorrow, we can choose to protect health care for our families. Tomorrow, we can rebuild an economy that rewards working Americans and not just the wealthy of us. Tomorrow, we can elect leaders who reflect our best instincts and not our worst. Tomorrow, we can choose hope over fear and unity over division. The promise to change over the, the power of the status quo. And if we do, Georgia, if we vote like our lives depend on it because they do, we will elect John Ossoff and Reverend Warnock to the United States Senate. We will send Joe Biden, Kamala Harris to the White House. And we will leave no doubt about who we are and what this country stands for. Honk if you're ready to go. Honk if you're fired up. Georgia, let's do this. Let's go out there and show that we believe. God bless you.